there's a way to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Him, there's always peace. Father, we pray for our country. Father, we pray that you would raise up leaders. Father, leaders that are servant leaders. Those who serve you and those who serve the people of this land. Father, we pray so much for our coming elections. Give us wisdom as we vote. And give us all leaders, Father. And will lead us in the way you would help us to go. song for the offering, please. Number 14, praise to the Almighty. Y'all have to bear with me because I'm playing this morning while Lynn's still out and Daryl called and he's sick, so y'all y'all just sing extra loud today. I can start you off, but you're going to have to sing loud. Okay? Okay. <laughs>
right, as the choir stands, let's turn to number 43, sing all three verses of This Is My Father's Word. Thank <laughs> you. 
you so much for that. We have wonderful musicians. I'm so grateful that they have this beautiful talent to share with us every every worship service, aren't you? Isn't that a blessing? Well, if you will, turn to Second Chronicles chapter 20 as we look at uh, Jehoshaphat again. I've got two more sermons on this wonderful king, the one this morning and then tonight. You're back for our evening service. You'll hear the, the best part of Jehoshaphat's reign is in the message tonight. But this morning, we'll look at how to respond to a crisis. Because Jehoshaphat certainly faced one, responded the way we ought to respond. And of course, he gives a wonderful model, a great example of national leadership. And particularly this year, as we are preparing to vote for a president and congressmen and senators and local officials and all that is going on. Uh, we need to try to find folks like this. This, this, is, this is the kind of leader we want. Look at verse 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 1. Now it came about after this that the sons of Moab and the sons of Am Ammon together with some from Mount Seir, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. And some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea out of Syria. And behold, they are in Hazan Tamar, that is, in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat was afraid, turned his attention to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. They even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and he said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, art thou not God in the heavens? And art thou not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in thy hand, so that no one can stand against thee. Didst thou not, O our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and give it to the descendants of Abraham, thy friend, forever? And they lived in it, and have built thee a sanctuary there for thy name, saying, Should evil come upon us, the sword, or judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before thee, for thy name is in this house, and cry to thee in our distress. Thou wilt hear and deliver us. Now behold, the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou didst not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, they turned aside from them and did not destroy them. Behold how they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out from thy possession, which thou hast given us as an inheritance. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on thee. And all Judah was standing before the Lord with their infants, their wives, and their children. Then in the midst of this assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, the Lephite, of the sons of Asaph, and he said, Listen, all Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multi multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley in front of the wilderness of Jerusalem. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites from the sons of the Kohohites and the sons of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a very loud 
voice. Man, what a scene. I would love to have been there that day. I'm glad the Holy Spirit inspired the writer to record this for us because it it uh, gives us such a graphic de depiction we can almost feel that we are there. What a wonderful, wonderful story. And the lessons that we receive on how to face crises in our own lives and indeed how a nation needs to face crises are, are well put in this story. I believe all of us are in some kind of crisis at one point or another in our lives, aren't we? I'm not sure that we are ever in a normal place. You know, I, I used to say, well, you know, after this gets over, we'll be back to normal. We'll be back to normal. And we never quite get back to normal, do we? Things uh, just seem to go from one crisis to another crisis. It's not drama. It's just the way it is. Life is hard. It's very difficult. All kinds of bad things come upon us from time to time, and we need to learn how to face those crises. Our nation is in crisis right now. We're in a crisis of our own doing in some regards, but we're also in a crisis in terms of a threat from afar. When uh, a nation like North Korea that does, doesn't seem to have any conscience or any scruples, any morals, uh, possessing uh, nuclear capability or testing missiles with the ability to deliver a warhead to our nation, uh, we better wake up and listen. You know, those people are just crazy enough to send one of those nukes our way. Uh, when uh, we make a deal with a nation who has vowed to kill us, uh, just on their word that they won't attain nuclear weapons, uh, I think we're in some kind of crisis of our own doing there. When, uh, when we see terrorist groups proliferate in our world, you know, how many of you can name all of them? You know, I can't. They're, they're too numerous. You've got them all over the place. They're everywhere. And uh, now we're told that there are even training camps in America. Uh, the FBI is talking about how many hundreds of active cases they have investigating terrorists who are right in our own midst. No wonder uh, we sense something of what Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat felt uh, when he faced that crisis of this three-nation league against him. So what did he do when he faced that crisis? Well, the first thing I notice here is very important. He acknowledged the crisis, <laughs> and he recognized his own fear. You know, sometimes we can try to whistle through the cemetery, and it's just not very useful to do that. You need to recognize the enemy. And uh, the enemy, as I said, sometimes is outside, sometimes it's us. You know, our changing culture, taking us away from the foundations of God's Word, has put this nation in the most severe crisis in my lifetime. You know, I was born right before the end of World War II, so that's a strong statement for me to make. But what Hitler could not do, and what the Russians did not do in the Cold War, we may do to ourselves. We may destroy ourselves by forsaking God in this kind of crisis. And folks, we need to learn to call sin, sin, to call the crisis what it is. When we do that, we also need to acknowledge, as Jehoshaphat did, I'm not up to this. And he recognized, admitted his fear. You know, it's not a bad thing to, to admit that you're afraid of something. I know when I was growing up, they raised boys and girls very differently back then. You know, girls were allowed to cry and got petted. <laughs> Something bad happened. Boys didn't get that. You know, they all said, spit on it and forget it, Ed. You know, that, that was the, did you, did you get that? You know, don't, don't cry. Boys don't cry. All that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm here to tell you all that stuff needs to go away. We need to recognize that some things make us afraid because we don't understand, nor do we have the ability, the power to withstand them within ourselves. Jehoshaphat admitted all of that. He was afraid. He admitted his fear. He recognized the crisis. And in his prayer later, he basically admitted to God, we are powerless 
to face this foe in our own strength. My, how we need to have that kind of honest assessment about the things that scare us. But more importantly than that, he didn't just wallow in his fear. You know, a lot of folks do that. They just they readily admit their fear, but they don't do anything about the fear. Sometimes they just spiral downward into depression and defeat and surrender. I don't think God wants us to do that. But he wants us to face our fears realistically and honestly. But more than anything, I think God wants us to seek his face. And that's exactly what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat turned his attention. Notice that. He, did, he didn't focus on anything else. He turned his attention to seek the Lord. Three things occurred when uh, the leader led the nation to seek the Lord. And oh, that we would have a leader, a president, a somebody, whoever would have a national forum would stand up and say, let's seek God for a change. Wouldn't that be refreshing? Say, well, Brother Ed, we live in a secular society. I'm here to tell you that most presidents in our history acknowledged God and sought after God. And if you hear some of the prayers that some of those men uttered, it, it would inspire you. And you'd say, man, I wish we'd have a president that could do that today. Suddenly, it seems that that's not the, that's not the way to go. We can't even acknowledge God. We might hurt somebody's feelings. We might trample on someone else's false religion. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, if we don't go to the one who can really help us, we're done for. We're done for. So he set his attention to seek the Lord. Three things. He proclaimed a fast. Now, I'm not one that says that a fast is a magical thing, but you remember when Jesus uh, performed the miracle of casting the demons out of the, the epileptic uh, symptom child one who's throwing himself in the fire. His disciples couldn't do it, and um, they were in all kind of trouble. And when Jesus and his three came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, they brought the boy to him. He healed him, cast the demon out. His, uh, his disciples, who were unsuccessful, said, why couldn't we cast him out? You remember what Jesus said? This kind can come out only by prayer and fasting. The, the, the purpose of a fast of course, the fast is simply a denial of basic food and water for a period of time. There's no specified period of time. Of course, Jesus had a 40-day and night fast uh, as he began his ministry. That's certainly an extreme thing. Um, we're not told how long the fast was for Jehoshaphat, but he was. Uh, the purpose of the fast is to get your attention on God and to get your attention away from the other things of life. It is basically a statement to God. We recognize that our survival is more dependent upon you than it is on the basic food and water of life. If we don't have you, we perish. A fast, he, he declared a fast. And all the people followed that lead and they participated in that fast with him, even down to the infants. It's a wonderful story. Second thing is they... they uh, were led in prayer by Jehoshaphat. This prayer, I'll not read it again, but I, I want you to circle this in your in your Bible from verse 6 through 13. This is one of the most dynamic prayers you'll ever hear. It is a prayer that acknowledges God is the one who is in control. Even though Jehoshaphat felt powerless in the face of these enemies who were gathered against him, he knew that God was all-powerful, and he acknowledged that in his prayer. He also reminded God of how God had blessed this people in their past, and he, he brought up their beginnings. He said, you promised to give this land to the descendants of Abraham, who is your friend forever. Abraham is your friend forever. You know, I think it would be good for us in our country to look back at our founding, you know, and see how our forefathers depended on God, actually were moved to prayer on many an occasion when it seemed like there was no way forward. And uh, how else can you explain the victory of America over the greatest superpower 
unknown to man in that time. You can't explain it any other way except God delivered America with a miraculous strength. He blessed our forefathers. I think it would be good for us to say, Lord, I remember how you blessed our forefathers, and I'm asking you to bless us in the same way right now. We are in that family of faith. He reminded God, uh, God of how these people who were assembled against them had been spared by God as Israel came out of Egypt. God told them not to attack these people, but to go around their lands and to honor them. And he said, now look how they're paying us back by trying to drive us out of your possession. You know, I, I think that's really good. Yeah, we've got a song we sing sometimes, that this land is my land, this land is your land. Well, it is in a way, but, you know, we, we really need to acknowledge the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Lord, this is your nation. America is yours. You blessed us. You helped us in our founding. This land is your land, Lord. We need to have that kind of attitude. What a wonderful prayer. And then he came to the request, God, will you judge them? For we do not have the ability to deliver ourselves from this great enemy. But our eyes are upon you. See, that prayer was not a prayer just of desperation. It was a prayer that was filled with hope and faith and confidence in a God who not only can act, but Jehoshaphat was trusting in a God who would act. What a wonderful prayer. The third thing that happened when uh, they turned their attention to seeking the Lord was that God gave a word. God gave a word. Now, we have God's word today without having to depend on some human instrument um, to speak for God. I know there are people who can stand and speak for God. I'm trying to do that right now, but I, I'm not speaking out of, out of some new thing that God has spoken to me. I'm speaking out of what God had already spoken in his word. And we don't need any more word from God than this book. We need to really get founded in that. So fasting, praying, immersing ourselves in the Word of God, that's how you see God. That's how you see God. In the experience of Jehoshaphat and Judah and Jerusalem, it came from a prophet. who said, in the midst of the assembly, uh, th this man was not an acknowledged prophet like Elijah was was in that day and some others, but he was in the Levitical tribe, that is, the people who led the folks in worship. The Levites were responsible for that. But God used that man uh, to deliver his word. And I want you to notice the, the word that he delivered to him. Do not fear or be dismayed. For the battle is not yours, but God's. That's the first word. You see, when we acknowledge our fear, God addresses our fear. And he says, don't be afraid, because I'm going to fight for you. Don't be afraid, I'm going to fight for you. When we stand with God, we can be sure that God will stand for us. Don't ever forget that. That's the first word. The second word he gave was, stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. What a word that is. I'll to say a little more about this in a moment. But here he's, he is telling them, you've, recon you've acknowledged, recognized that you don't have the ability to defeat this enemy in your own strength. Therefore, I'm not asking you to have to fight at all. I want you just to stand and see you to stand and see. Third word, he said, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. You see, the way we overcome our fear is not by, by whistling through the cemetery. We need to stand up and face our fears head on. And he said, tomorrow go out and face that enemy, but don't worry 
I am with you. I am with you. I'm here to tell you today, I, I don't know if the crisis that you currently are facing or if the crisis that our nation is currently facing, I don't know if it's, if it's one where God wants us to just stand and watch him work or not. I'm not sure about that. But this one thing I do know, if we will commit ourselves and trust God, he will be with us. And that's the greatest source of strength that is available to anyone. He will be with us. The Word of God, prayer, fasting. Next thing I noticed about Jehoshaphat is that they had faith in what God was saying. You see, faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from the Word of God. Notice the response in verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping him. Um, in verse 20, I'm getting a little ahead, but I want to, I want to just show you the, the evidence of faith. As Jehoshaphat led his people the next day, he stood up and said, Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. In other words, trust God and his word. Faith is the absolute key to triumph. Faith unlocks all that God wants to do through his grace and mercy and power. God absolutely demands our total confidence and trust in him. It's a faith that believes that God is in control. It is a faith that trusts what God says. It is a faith that depends on God for deliverance and salvation. The last thing I noticed that they did to face this crisis is that they worshiped the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? They bowed his face. Jehoshaphat led the worship. He bowed his face to the ground. All the crowds of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down and worshiped. The worship leaders cried with a loud voice, worshiping the Lord God of Israel. To worship God is to surrender to him. It is to offer to him praise and thanksgiving, to give him all the glory not only for what he has done and is doing, but for what he also will do in the future. And God bless that worship service immeasurably, immeasurably. What Jehoshaphat and his people experienced that day was a wonderful miracle of God. We could point to other like evidences in the scripture we could point to things in the history of our nation which would be just as miraculous as God delivered our nation through many threats, many terrors, many fears in our history. We could point to all those, but I'm, I'm here to say that what you need to gain from this wonderful example of facing crisis is what God has done for us in Jesus Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection. That battle, which is the battle of all the ages between good and evil, where evil sought to do its worst, God's good and God's love did its best. We could do nothing about our sin and its subsequent punishment of death, eternal death, eternal separation from God. That is awful news. That is bad news. And we were absolutely helpless and hopeless to do anything about our sin condition. As Paul wrote to the Ephesians, we were dead in our trespasses and sin. And what we need to acknowledge is that dead people have the ability to do absolutely nothing. The problem with a lot of people in experiencing salvation is they're trying to help God with it. I'm here to tell you, you can't help God with your salvation. All you can do is trust him to provide salvation through his marvelous grace to you.
that faith unlocks the grace for your salvation. But Jesus did the whole battle in our behalf. His battle was begun um, from eternity. And his battle was won on Calvary's cross in what seemed to be a defeat. Jesus actually defeated the forces of evil. And all the sins of all of mankind for all time was laid on him on that cross. And he crucified them on that cross. He put to death our sin, our hatred of God, our enmity. And in its place, he provided forgiveness and life. Forgiveness and life. That's the good news. Jesus defeated evil on the cross. His resurrection affirmed his victory. And there is no other salvation from anyone but Jesus. Don't ever turn loose of that. And it is only through faith in him that we can experience the ultimate victory uh, and success that God has promised to us that we would live with him forever. Our response not only should be to seek the Lord, to fast and pray and trust his word, not only to trust the Lord and to depend on his word, but our response always ought to be absolute surrender in worship. And not just worship when we gather here together, but worship in all of our lives. Every moment of every day ought to be a worship to God, a gift to God of ourselves in absolute devotion and love. What a God we serve. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for Jehoshaphat, for the example and model that he is for us, how we pray that you will help us to be the same way. Lord, if there's even one here who is struggling with sin, has not yet turned their lives over to you in total surrender. I pray that you will grant them repentance and faith even now to trust you and receive your grace, your life, your salvation. Lord, help us to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. We love you and we praise you for any and all who will come now. In Jesus' name, amen. We we'll invite you to stand as Brother Eddie comes to lead us in our invitation hymn. Number 311, let Jesus come into your heart. I want you to stand. Let's sing the first and the last stanzas together. Brother Charles is here. I'll be here to help you if you need to respond in some public way. If you are tired of the load of your sin, let Jesus come into your heart. If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your tidings give more. Just now reject him no more. Just now throw open the door. Let Jesus come into your Sing heart. That last dance. Sing it out. Sing it out. If you would join the glad songs of the blessed, let Jesus come into your heart. If you would enter the mansions of rest, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your doubtings give more. Just now reject him no more. Just now throw open the door. Let Jesus come into your heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presence this morning. Hope you'll be back tonight at 530 for our evening worship. And if not, just know that our prayers are with you and we love you. Thank God for you. I do want to say one thing about the March for Life uh, tomorrow, the, our Save Life walk that was yesterday. Uh, we had a wonderful crowd. God bless us. Good weather. He, he answered our prayers in that behalf. 
and uh, we raised uh, in excess of $49,000 for that ministry. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. Uh, I remember when I first went on the board for Save a Life, if we got $15,000 in that walk, we thought it was fantastic. So, but, you know, we need even more. We depend on that walk for at least half of our budget. That's not quite half of our budget. So you keep praying for the ministry. Uh, I know God will give the ministry exactly what it needs. Uh, he's blessed in so many ways in the past. You know, we've got, got the new building offering ultrasounds. More and more abortion-minded women are changing their li- minds and deciding to give life to that child because they're, they're seeing that baby on the ultrasound. You know, when you're looking at it, when you see it, it's just different uh, than any other any other medium. So, you know, it, it costs more. It's a costly ministry. But I thank you so much for your sacrificial giving. I'm, I'm not sure I hadn't totaled up everything that we've given, but I think we gave close to 2000 just from our congregation, which is a wonderful sacrificial gift from you. And I thank you so much for that. And I, I give God the glory for that. Amen. Amen. Good ministry. All right, we're going to do like the, the folks in Jehoshaphat's day. We're just going to praise the Lord. This is a wonderful course. I just came to praise the Lord. Sing it out, and this will be our benediction song. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. Have a good afternoon. See you back tonight.